Morning to everyone on the call. Um, Tim, can you just give me a nod if you can hear? All good. Um, so as ever, got about 20 minutes with Jonas. Um, we're going to kick off with the broadcast section in the room with Sky, then come to, to those of you on the call. I can see some hands already, but obviously, as per last season, put your hands up and we'll try to get around as many as we can. And we'll kick off with Fadume. Thank you so much. We're looking ahead of the start of the season, Arsenal taking on um, Brighton at home. How have preparations been for that so far? Uh, I think preparations has been has been good. Uh, I mean, we, uh, we 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 had a pretty short turnaround to the game that we were supposed to play against Manchester City, uh, but we we managed to to change our planning uh, quickly uh, to. Um, and, and to adjust to the new uh, playing schedule. So I think those days has served us well into preparing the team now, both for Brighton, but also for the games that comes after. The last week's fixtures were cancelled due to um, the passing of Queen as the second. How has that um, affected the team, part of the team, morale, things like that? Uh, I, I think it's, uh, I mean, I think you have a football world that was pre-COVID and post-COVID. Uh, and, and COVID has teached us a lot about being flexible um, and uh, that things can change very quickly. Uh, so I think we have a very professional uh, squad and they're very adaptable to new situations. So, um, and we prefer not to spend energy on things that we, we can't control. Um, with obviously the passing, there's a lot of clubs have been taking the moment to have a moment of silence during the opening games. We've seen that happen for them teams in the last couple of games that happened, then hopefully we'll have that in this game. Um, how do you feel fans will respond to that? Um, I, I think they will respond like the, the Mason has been in, in general with, uh, with great respect uh, to the Queen and, uh, and to remember and to honour uh, her. So uh, but uh, I think that that would be a, a nice moment to uh, to show and to show unity and that uh, that can be for both home fans and away fans and home team and away team. Last question. Um, with the start of the team coming up, we've had a lot of standout players within the Arsenal squad. We've obviously done really well in the Wednesday as well. So, Neil Williamson, captain of the team, obviously, but me, how integral will those players be um, in the back of the season? I think it's all. Connected. Uh, I think it's, um, of course, the, the things that they did at, at Arsenal before they went to the Euros helped them to do a good performance uh, in the Euros. And that good performance in the Euros will hopefully now help us at Arsenal. So that's why I think it's so important that we, we try as much as possible to create environments which allows for individual development, both at club and uh, international level. Thanks. Brilliant. Thank you. We'll come to the call now. Tim? Hi, Ernest. Hope you're well. Um, my first question before I get into the meteor questions is just around injuries. Um, Caitlin Ford and Steph Catley, I know, had some issues when they were away. Has the extra time, uh, does the extra time mean that they'll be back for the game on Friday? Yes. Good stuff. Um, I, I, now I wanted to ask a question about the transfer window. Um, and I wanted to ask, I mean, it, it looked really busy for everyone, everyone trying to do lots of things. Um, and certainly, you know, stuff I'd heard about Arsenal perhaps missing some targets. Did you get everything uh, done that you wanted to get done in the window? Were there were there other positions that you wanted to fill but couldn't manage to in the end? Uh, <clears throat> yes, I, I'm going to try and be very honest with, with this one here. Um, ideally, I would have liked one more player. Uh, but um, for, and it's always like this when you do transfers. There is so many reasons sometimes why, why things can't go through. And our preference then was if we couldn't find a perfect fit now this window, and we'd rather do it in the next window. Uh, but it's not more than one player. I think when you, when you see the list of players in and out for Arsenal, it's very skewed compared to other clubs. Because remember, last January, we... We brought in many players and didn't release any players because of the Asia Cup at the time. And that meant that we carried a very big squad uh, during the spring season, which was 
which which was a couple of players too too large in uh, in order to accommodate for for the number of games uh, that we have. So so it was natural that there was going to be more players out than than in, and it was more important to keep the the key players for us so we can keep building consistency and culture with them. But um, one more player and um, that that has to be in January. Okay, and um, just uh, just a final question around the kind of squad build. Um, I think one of the positions a lot of Arsenal fans are really curious about is what happens, I guess, beneath Leo Volti in that number six position. Again, loads of clubs were trying to get players in this position this summer and the transfer record was broken for a player in this position. In terms of the Arsenal squad, who else do you see being able to play in that position other than Leo? Uh, which one, Leo? Uh, Leo Volti. Yeah, so, <clears throat> so I think obviously from... When, when I see in England that Leah, the other Leah, she, she can also play there. Uh, Kim Little uh, can definitely play there. Uh, I think if Frida Monum uh, improves her, uh, her defense, and that's just some small adjustments that she needs to do in her positioning and decision making there, I think she has all the tools in, in order to be able to do it as well. Uh, so um, I, I and, and remember when we saw us from last season, that's that's the same options um, we we had then. Um, so um, that's uh, that that I'm confident with, and uh, that we have a lot of different alternatives that will give us a little bit different tool compared to like what game we're playing against, what what opponents we're playing against. Thanks, Jonas. Speak Friday. Thanks. Cheers, Tim. Dan. Morning, and Jonas, hope you're well. Um, I just want your thoughts on Brighton, really, because they've had two summers now where they've lost a lot of players and, you know, there's been a big turnover. Um, you know, yourselves, you've had quite a settled summer, really. Um, so, you know, do you think that's going to come into the play, you know, on Friday night? Uh, that's hard to say. Uh, I've been very impressed by Brighton during the preseason because I also saw that they had a huge turnover, but I've seen them play against Bayern Munich, I've seen them play against us, I've seen them play against Manchester City, and they've uh, they looked like a good team uh, in those games. So I think they've um, some of the players that they've got in is, is really high quality. So um, we 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 expecting and prepare a very competitive game here on Friday. And is there anywhere kind of specific within the team or something that you want from your team in terms of you know, maybe an improvement on last year, you know, looking in ahead for this season? Um, yeah, I, I would say two things. Um, it's one is it's from a tactical, it's better to deal with man marking systems uh, that I spoke about at the end of last season as well. Second one is, is mental to see even if we have um, events in the games that goes against us, that could be, for example, conceding a goal uh, or a referee decisions or, or so on, that we need to not let that affect us. Uh, if we want to build and grow a, a winning team, we, we need to give everything on the pitch for every second in all situations. Uh, and, and that we need to do in, in all games, in all situations this year. That's brilliant. Cheers, Jonas. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Amy from Goal. Hi, Jonas. Just kind of following on from what you've just said there about wanting to improve the, the mental side to, to create a winning team. Four players in your squad won international trophies this summer. Do you think that they can bring something different to help with that this season? I think with, with mental strength, it, it starts with believing. Uh, because... You, of course, if you can see the goal, you will have different emotions going through your body, and um, you can you can let those emotions take over your your thoughts and then influence your actions. And you can give up or think, "Oh, it's going to be one of those days we're going to concede another goal," or you can remember and say, "No, wait a minute." For example, the English players, if we take them as an example, going win one nil down against Spain in Brighton. They will have the memory in their in their brain saying, no, it doesn't have to be that way. It can be one of those days as well where we score in the 80th minute and then we get an overtime goal. 
And so, of course, I think positive experiences helps a lot in order to, to deal with adverse situations. Uh, because once you have seen that to work, why wouldn't you choose to always believe for that scenario instead of for the other? Uh, so that's what I want us to do, to believe for the positive outcome every time. Uh, is it going to happen every time? I don't know, but I will believe it will. And you talked about bringing those players in in January. Um, a couple of those players in particular with Stina and Raffaele ended up being really key players in the second half of last season, starting players. Do you think that being in the squad over the summer for a pre-season, they can, I guess that will improve the squad in a way just because they're more familiar with your ideas and the on-pitch relationships? Definitely. Uh, well, I think... Sometimes you miss that Rafaela, she she missed all our last games last season because of injury. Uh, when the, the semi-final in the FA Cup, the quarterfinals in the in the Champions League, all the finishing games in the WSL. So um, even if she did a very good and big impact for us, we didn't have her for the finishing end there. So that that also is another play coming back from from injury uh, that I'm really grateful for. Um, another one is Jordan Knobs that, that also went off with a knee injury against Aston Villa and we wasn't quite sure on how severe that was. That's also very pleasing for us that she's back and fully able to, to compete again. So um, I think time together that you spend it's, will always be beneficial in football and it's a luxury in football because like you will see most squads will have lots of turnover. And women's football have not maybe been as used to that, where it has been a little bit more solid squats from season to season. And we see much more change here now. And um, that, that puts different demands onto it. So it's really important that you can keep a core of players together that can really harness and develop a relationship. Thanks, Jonas. Good luck. Thanks. Uh, from The Athletic. Hi, Jonas. Hope you're well. Um, just on the four players that won an international trophy uh, in the summer, I know when Tobin left last year, you mentioned almost she was like that tree in the Avatar movie where it connects everyone um, with the shared experiences. I was just wondering, uh, do you think those four players can have a similar effect on the rest of the squad despite um, the rest of the squad not experiencing what they experienced in the summer? I also think it's important to emphasize in, in that aspect that um, we have a lot of players that have been in finals and, and also have been winning things before uh, this summer. So I think it's it's that, I mean, the shared pool of all those experiences, that's why it's, what's really important. Uh, and we will have players that will have in fresh memory success or you will have in fresh memory failure, but each one of us and the players, they will have some memories of some really, really big successes. And that's what you have to uh, keep remembering to keep believing in those situations. So, of course, we're trying to use all those experience from a positive point of view. Yeah, and um, I think quite often in football, uh, at major tournaments, there's often new trends um, that kind of occur. I was just wondering, from your time covering the, the Euros, were there any trends you kind of spotted that you thought were quite interesting? Um, no, I, 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 I can't really say from a tactical perspective that I was blown away by the Euros from any team. Uh, uh, well, I didn't think that. I thought it was great from an entertainment perspective. Um, I think there was some really, really competitive and good football being uh, being played. But if there was any ideas there that that I thought was new, refreshing, haven't seen before, no, I didn't think so. I think it has come to the same point in uh, women's football as in men's football that the the innovative ways to play you see now in the Champions League and women's football, just like you do in men's football. Uh, and that's natural because clubs spend more time with the players. So you have more time to, to practice and, and do things different. Cool. Thank you. I see. Hi, Jonas. Hope you had a good summer. 
Um, could I just ask, do you think your starting lineup on Friday will be shaped by the team you want to play against Ajax next week? Or at this stage of the season, do you think that players should be able to play two games in a week? Uh, I think they should be able to uh, to play every time. Yeah, I don't think we play that tough schedule. Uh, it's, I think we have four days in between most games. Uh, we should have been able to build a fitness uh, by now. So uh, we, we should be able to play with the players we want to play with all the time. Okay. And uh, we, a couple of weeks ago, we spoke to Leah about how it might be for her this season after the high of winning the Euros. No, no English players in over half a century have had to deal with what Beth, Leah and Beth in particular might have to go through this season. So have you had any special advice for them on how to cope with all the inevitable noise and distractions around them generated by people like us? But I think it's part of the the, the, the mental strength needed to be an excellent footballer is to concentrate on the pitch and to remember that just because you have won something before or because someone has voted you to something, that's great. It's an achievement, but you're not entitled to anything for it on the pitch for future games. It's You still have to do everything from the beginning every time you go on the pitch. Every day you have to earn your right to play. You don't get anything for free in football. And uh, that's the mindset you have to have. No matter how much you have won before or how much awards you've got, still you got coming out on the pitch and you have to start on the same page as everyone else. Okay, great. Best luck for the season. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Jim? Hi, morning, sir. Can I just ask just one um, quick question just about the, uh, the, the the scheduling now? Do, do you think that's going to make much of a much of a difference? We've seen Arsenal's, a couple of Arsenal's men's games have to be rearranged because of the uh, the postponements last weekend or is that just something that as a, as a football team you just have to kind of get on with um i'm not sure i quite understand the question sorry with with all of the postponements with the with the postponements in the season now we've had the added unexpected postponements that were brought in because of the the, the Queen's passing and her funeral. Is that just something that you guys as a club just have to take on board and just be ready for whatever situation might come up? Yeah, of course. Now we try to to plan the fixtures uh, getting in. And uh, <clears throat> I, my, my opinion, uh, but I don't think that's going to matter, is that in the WSL that you will play all the games from this round being postponed at the same date. So you don't create a league table where some play, teams have played 10 and some teams have played 11. And you play on different sides of the transfer window and so on. I don't think anyone will take that into account. But for me, when I look from that, from just trying to make it fair, uh, and for me, it's really important that the competition is fair to all teams, I would do it that way. And how do you think generally the WSL is going to respond this season to all the extra interest that there's going to be? Um, I'm sure uh, that, the, that, that the players uh, will, will respond in a, in a way that will be excellent uh, because uh, the quality uh, on the pitch, if we see that as the sporting product, it is there. Uh, it is of high quality. Then we just need to make sure that we now find uh, stadiums uh, that allow all attendances to, uh, to come in uh, and watch. Uh, and I think that that will be the problem to see where we have a very low number of the medium-sized stadiums uh, in the country. So you either have smaller stadiums or really big stadiums. Um, and... Um, our game that didn't go ahead against City, I think it's a perfect example of that. That with two so good teams and with interest from the viewers, of course, that's going to be a sellout at, at their academy stadium. Then it's the question is, and so much more people want to watch the game, where do we play it then? Uh, so, so, so we really can't have all the people that wants to come to the game and watch, that they have access to it. That's great. Thanks very much. Best of luck. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Jonathan? 
Good morning, Jonas. Um, Beth Mead was one of the stars of the Euros. Have you seen a difference in her game since she returned to training with Arsenal? No. Have you not seen any intensity, like a difference in uh, like any aspect of her game? Like, is she bringing the same intensity? Or is... Yeah, I thought she brought the same intensity to the Euros as she had in Arsenal, and she brings the same intensity back to Arsenal um, again. And, and you know what's funny is that in football, we, we always look backwards. We always look backwards and we think that uh, history will always be the guarantee for the future. But remember, what did you guys write about Beth Mead last summer? Uh, not much, because then there was someone else that had performed well during the Olympics. And you thought, that's going to be the, the, the result for next season. You never know. It's with, with people and it's the future. And that's why it's important that no matter how much you have won, it's about what you are looking forward and what you're doing with the present that matters. And uh, that's um, that's where Beth needs to look forward. But every player in Arsenal needs to do that in, in order to achieve new things. Because football is never standing still. So as a club or player or coach, we can't stand still either. Thanks, Jonathan. Last one from you, Sandra. Hi, Jonas. I hope you're well. Um, just following on from the points you made there about Stadia. Um, last, oh. week, oh, sorry, last week, um, Hope Powell, um, well, ahead of the Brighton's postponed game, talked about, you know, obviously the Euro's interest, all the fans turning out for, for the Lionesses and other games as well, which were breaking um, attendance records. Just the challenge of main, kind of maintaining that level of interest when it's you know, uh, January, for example, it's cold, it might be wet and fans are travelling up and down across the country. Some going to, like you say, perhaps smaller grounds. I mean, what else would you like to do in terms, or would you like to see in terms of trying to maintain that kind of, or maintain that fan attendance um, level? I mean, I know Arsenal have done quite well with ticket numbers for Friday's game and obviously with the North London derby, but what else do you think needs to happen to ensure that we don't see a kind of dip or a tail off? Um, I mean, in, in the end, it's about creating a product that means so much for people that you go there and you watch the game, even if it's a snowstorm. And you go there and you watch even if it's not convenient, uh, because you care so much about, about the team uh, and you want to be there as much. So we try to do our best on the pitch to create that. And of course, we do that if I speak just about Arsenal as a whole club, trying to do work together with all the departments so we can reach out to, to all our potential audiences and, and bring them to the stadium so we can experience that together. But that I think, and that's not a quick fix just to do one thing. That's about to, um, to making that connection to people that, that they want to go uh, and they, they feel that they have to go uh, because they... Uh, they want to do it and it's their first priority to do it. And uh, then you don't have to worry about the weather in January when you have created that. Great, thanks very much, Ernest. Cheers. Brilliant. Thank you very much, everyone.